Hello, my fellow folks and fellow goats. Welcome to the Command Valley. My name is Griffin. Super happy to have you here today for another one of our Commander 2021 deck upgrade guides featuring a $20 budget. Before we begin, I just wanted to remind you that this episode and this podcast is sponsored by Game Grid. If you are looking for any of these cards or the deck itself, feel free to head on over to the link in the description box below where you can go to Game Grid's website or those cards and support the podcast while doing so. If you are looking for the best way to support the podcast, then consider going to patreon.com slash command valley. Check out our awesome tiers, all with exclusive benefits and perks that you certainly won't want to miss out on. If this is your first time with our deck upgrade guides, allow me to introduce what these are. We go through all of the new commander decks and recommend to you the cards to take out and the cards to put in to make this deck just that much better. And all of our upgrades for this year are going to be at the $20 budget range. So you only need $20 to upgrade this deck, which is awesome. Again, just like with all of our recommendations, we aren't saying that we are the end-all know-all for these cards. These are just the ones that we would recommend for you to look at and consider putting into the deck to upgrade it. You might have other cards that you want to put in and by all means go ahead and put those in. But This is just a helpful guide to help you get started in the upgrade. Now the leader of the Silver Quill Statement Commander 2021 deck is Brina the Demagogue who is one white black for a 1-3 legendary creature bird warlock. She has flying and whenever a player attacks one of your opponents, if that opponent has more life than another of your opponents, that attacking player draws a card and you put two plus one plus one counters on a creature you control. But in the Silva Quirrell Statement deck, we also got another face commander named Felisa Fang of Silver Quill. Felisa is two white black for a 3-2 legendary creature vampire wizard with flying and mentor. And whenever a non-token creature you control dies, if it had counters on it, create X tapped 2-1 white and black inkling creature tokens with flying, where X is the number of counters it had on it. Now, I did a lot of thinking about this deck, looking between Brina and Felisa, and I came to the conclusion that Felisa would be better as the front face commander for this deck. I see a lot of political cards and group hug-esque effects in this deck. I just don't think that that's going to be the way that you build this deck stronger. In my personal experience, political decks have to have a lot of good synergies in order for it to be fun to play and fun to play against. So with that, I'm going to recommend that you switch out Brina the Demagogue with Felisa Fang of Silverquill. However, I would keep Brina the Demagogue in here because these cards that I'm going to recommend to you are going to be upgrades for Felisa Fang of Silverquill. Now Felisa is trying to push you in an aristocrat's counters theme, which her ability on her card allows you to take very good advantage of. Before we get to the cards that I recommend that you put in, here are the cards that I recommend that you take out. I won't go into a lot of detail with all of these, just know that I personally didn't feel like these had a place in this deck and there were better options. However, if one of these are your pet cards, then by all means, keep it in your deck. We have Gideon, Champion of Justice, a Planeswalker that has the ability to put loyalty counters equal to the amount of creatures target opponent controls. Can also exile all other permanents for a minus 15 cost. Doesn't do much in our deck or synergize well with our commander. Oblation is two and a white for an instant. The owner of target non-land permanent shuffles it into his or her library, then draws two cards. Probably one of the worst removal spells I've seen. Never enjoyed playing this, so we're just going to go ahead and take that out. Coveted Jewel is six mana for an artifact. When it enters the battlefield, draw three cards. Tap, add three mana of any one color, and whenever one or more creatures in opponent controls attack you and aren't blocked, that player draws three cards and gains control of Coveted Jewel. Untap it. I just don't like this card. You're incentivizing your opponents to attack you. You might not even gain control of it back. Just not a good card. Duelist Heritage is two and a white for an enchantment. Whenever one or more creatures attack, you may have target attacking creature gain double strike until end of turn. With the play patterns of this deck, I don't find that we're going to have a lot of power on our creature, so giving something double strike might not be as good as we think it is. Curse of Disturbance is a curse that enchants a player, and whenever a enchanted player is attacked, create a 2-2 black zombie creature token, and each opponent attacking that player does the same. Normally, I'm not a huge fan of curses. There are a few of them that are really efficient and very good. Curse of Disturbance doesn't fit that requirement for me. I've also taken out the two Impetus cards, Martial Impetus and Parasitic Impetus, which are enchantment auras that you chant onto your opponent's creatures that goads them and gives an extra ability. Also don't find that's very relevant in this deck. We're trying to move away from that political theme. Again, I don't think that this deck has enough political strength in order for it to go very far. Zatalpa Primal Dawn is 6 white white for a 4-8 legendary creature Elder Dinosaur with flying, double strike, vigilance, trample, and indestructible. Zatalpa is very good in certain decks. Like, it is very good in Cathril, Aspect Warper, not this one. Kinda sad to see it be put into this deck. Go ahead and drop Zatalpa as well. 
Haunted Lamasu is too white white for a 5 5 flying Lamasu. When Hunted Lamasu comes into play, put a 4 4 black horror creature token into play under target opponent's control. I never love giving our opponents creatures, especially when we don't have something to stop them from attacking us. And again, moving away from the political aspect. And then lastly, we have Guardian Icon, which is 4 white white for a 5 5 flying Archon. As Guardian Archon enters the battlefield, secretly choose an opponent. Reveal the player you chose. You and target opponent, you control each game protection from the chosen player until end of turn. Activate only once. This is going to be the one that I'm a little bit on the fence about. I don't really want to pay this mana for this type of effect. You can only use it once, but it is on a 5-5 flyer, so I can see the argument for putting it in. I could also see the arguments for taking it out. So for now, we're going to take it out. And then the last two cards are just going to be two lands, one basic swamp and one basic plains. Simply for the fact that this deck has 40 lands, which is probably too, too many, I like to comfortably sit around 38. So I would also recommend sitting around 38 so you don't have a, so you don't have a bunch of lands in your hand. Alright folks and goats, now for the exciting part. My recommendation for the 12 cards that we're going to put in here with a $20 budget. Again, you can pick up all of these cards for only $20, so feel free to go to GameGrib's link and purchase these cards for your Silver Quill Statement deck. First off, we've got Carrion Feeder, one black for a 1-1 one, one zombie. Carrion Feeder can't block, and you can sacrifice a creature to put a plus one plus one counter on Carrion Feeder. Looking again at Felisa, we can see that we really want to be able to control when creatures die to get the most benefit off of the death triggers. So having a sack outlet like Carrion Feeder is going to be perfect for the strategy that we're going for. Next up, we've got Corpse Knight, which is white black for a 2-2 zombie knight. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, each opponent loses one life. This is how we push into the Aristocrats theme. By having Corpse Knight to drain all of our opponents when a creature has entered the battlefield, including the tokens that are going to be created from Felisa, you'll be surprised by how much life this is going to drain from your opponents. We also want things to die in Trigger, so we have Zulaport Cutthroat. For one in a black, we have a 1-1 Human Rogue Ally. Whenever Zulaport Cutthroat or another creature you control dies, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. So it's just the other side of Corpse Knight. Anything entering, Corpse Knight will trigger. Anything leaving, Zulaport Cutthroat will trigger. And Offensa Kintree Spirit is white white for a 2-2 legendary creature spirit soldier. Whenever another non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, bolster one. Very efficient in this deck because we want to put plus one plus one counters on our creatures so that when they die, we get those 2-1 inklings. And Anafenza is a very cheap way of assuring that as soon as they come out, they will get a plus one plus one counter. Mentor of the Meek is 2 and a white for a 2-2 human soldier. Whenever another creature with power 2 or less enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay 1 generic if you do draw a card. This is very, very good with our commander because we are creating two one inklings when our creatures die, which are going to trigger Mentor of the Meek, and we could be potentially drawing lots of cards with Mentor of the Meek, so it's a nice engine to put in here. Basri's Lieutenant is three and a white for a 3-4 Human Knight with Vigilance, protection from multicolored. When Basri's Lieutenant enters the battlefield, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control. And whenever a Basri's Lieutenant or another creature you control dies, if it had a plus one plus one counter on it, create a 2-2 White Knight creature token with Vigilance. This is doubling up our ability to make creature tokens when our creatures die with plus one plus one counters on it. So with some setup, we can get a lot of tokens out when our creatures die. Nightmare Shepherd is 2 black black for a 4-4 enchantment creature demon. With flying and whenever another non-token creature you control dies, you may exile it. If you do, create a token that's a copy of that creature, except it's a 1-1 and it's a nightmare in addition to its other types. This can be very good for getting those ETB triggers a second time when they die, but if you read carefully in Nightmare Shepherd, it reads, whenever another non-token creature you control dies, you may exile it. It does not say you may exile it instead, so we're still going to get those death triggers for our commander and get token copies of those creatures when they die. Big fan of Nightmare Shepherd. Felidar Retreat is three and a white for an enchantment with landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, choose one. Create a 2-2 white cat beast creature token or put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control. Those creatures gain vigilance until end of turn. This is a surefire way to put plus one plus one counters on all of our creatures, making sure that when any of them die, if they're non-tokens, we're going to get those 2-1 Inklings. It can also give us some tokens and some creatures. Just a solid card. I'm sure you know if you've played against it or played with it. Grave Betrayal is 5 black black for an enchantment. Whenever a creature you don't control dies, return it to the battlefield under your control with an additional plus 1 plus 1 counter on it at the beginning of the next end step. That creature is a black zombie in addition to its other colors and types. This is working double hard in our deck because already getting our opponent's creatures 
when they die is super, super good. But the fact that they get plus one, plus one counter so that when they die again, we will get those two one inklings from our commander. That just, whew, super good. All right, and for the last three cards, this is gonna be my exceptional category. These three cards are the ones I suggest that you put in first. They are just so good in this deck, and when you play them, you will see what I mean. The first one we have is Skull Clamp, one generic for an artifact. Equipped creature gets plus one, minus one, and whenever a crypt creature dies, draw two cards, and has an equipped cost of one. So those inkling tokens that we are making with our commander, we can just clamp them for one generic and draw two cards. Oh my goodness. If you've played with Skull Clamp and you have tokens, you can draw so many cards. And I do see that this deck does kind of struggle with card draw, so it's very important that we have an engine in here like Skull Clamp. Secondly, we have Catharist Crusade for three white white. We have an enchantment. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control. Catharist Crusade can just go nuts in so many different types of decks, and this deck is no exception. With creatures entering the battlefield, they immediately get a plus one plus one counter on them with all the rest of your creatures on the battlefield and when they die you create two one inklings that also trigger Cather's crusade putting a plus one plus one counter on them and all of your other creatures just so good it's so good and it's only five bucks right now so you should pick this up even if it's not for this deck pick this card up and then lastly we have tasia karlov two white black for a two four legendary creature human advisor if a creature dying causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger that ability triggers an additional time and creature tokens you control have Vigilance and Lifelink. So, so wonderful in this deck to have a Death Harmonicon that additionally triggers off of our commander's ability, just getting so many 2-1 flyers, doubling all of the death triggers we already have. It doesn't get much better than that. And there you have it, friends. Those are the cards I recommend to put into this deck around a $20 budget. If you have any cards you would recommend to us or to your fellow goats, then feel free to comment it in the comment section below. We love hearing from you, seeing how excited you are for these decks, and we're super excited to pick these up, as I'm sure you all are as well. We will be back soon for our next deck upgrade guide, so stick around and stay tuned for those ones as well as all the other Commander deck techs that are going to be coming out in the next couple weeks. All right, my goats, if you haven't already liked and subscribed, feel free to do so. We really appreciate it and appreciate all of you who have subscribed and supported us this far. And without further ado, I will see you all next time.